Good afternoon. It's a nice pleasant day here in Arizona on a Saturday and I believe this is the first Saturday in October like Saturday the 6th and it's exactly one week since we started over uh, with our seeds after the birds took our seedlings. And we had our special treat of the worm tea that we got from Arizona Worm Farm. And our very first night um, our, in our, with our seeds, we soaked them in some of that worm tea. And the next day, we planted them in um, some bonus soil, seedling soil mix that we got from our friends at Arizona Worm Farm to kind of try out uh, their recipe. And so we put them in soil the next day, about exactly 24 hours after we put them in the tea. And now we are at one week since the night that we soaked them. And I can't wait to show you what we've got going on. So take a look. So for one week, I think those are some pretty good results. And I'm actually pretty grateful that we ended up in this process just by, you know, pure kismet. Uh, that we ended up uh, going to the worm farm this same weekend that we of the week that we lost all our seedlings. Except for two. We do have um, two survivors. Well, three green bean plants and one... Uh, squash plant I think it's a butternut that uh, actually was the second seed and somehow or another it managed to live but then we had all that rain and I noticed that my beds did great like they never flooded so I know my seeds wouldn't float away but I would have been worried <laughs> I would have been thinking about it constantly and this way I was able to keep them inside with me and when things calmed down out here I went ahead and brought them out here and put them on my patio and kind covered them with a little bit of tool. Um, that's a fabric. Um, I'm sure everybody says that one different too. But I covered them up like that and um, I just wanted to get them a little bit more warm than what the inside of my house was and they're doing great. So we'll just keep an eye on them each week and see what's going on with them. Well, I'm back over here at my handy dandy composter and I've just uh, got to be honest with you. Uh, the last two batches I did really kind of got neglected and that was a lot my fault. It was one kid's chore and it was quite a chore for us all to help him keep up with this chore. So uh, we kind of took a break from it a little while, but now that I'm really uh, had the time to put into the garden, I and I want a worm bin so bad, but I feel like if I want a worm bin, then I've got to start getting on top of my own compost. And it's kind of like I do with one of my kids. If I can prove to myself that I'm going to maintain and do all this compost in by myself, I mean, the kids can come dump stuff, but I'm going to keep up with it I'm not just gonna rely on anybody else in the little group here to do it and um, if I can do that then my reward is gonna be that I can get one of those worm bins from the Arizona worm farm and start a worm farm so uh, I just want to uh, bring you back over here to the composter real quick and show you that what we've got in here are basically a bunch of plants that I took out of bed one and you'll see uh, the next time we do a little quick tour that the bed that had the rest of the collard greens and the uh, rest of the Swiss chard and I also trimmed up those peppers a little bit because like I mentioned in one of our first videos They were starting to take up sunlight from the green beans that I have growing over there And if I've got one good success, I've really got to be good to it So I trimmed up those peppers a lot because they're last season, you know, and we've talked about that so I put this in I put this stuff in here we actually threw it in the day that that big rain came it was um this past Monday and we just stuffed it in there I let some rain drip in here but because we are in a very dry climate we have to make sure that we keep this wet often because it's easy for it to dry out and I've got a bunch of leaves so I put I took a bunch of leaves that we had just kind of in a pile over here that hadn't gotten out the bulk trash that I'm actually gonna end up start using for mulch uh, I took some of that and put that with the plants that I'd cut up 
So I'm gonna get it real wet right now. And then these are my kitchen scraps that I've been collecting um, pretty uh, thoughtfully on purpose because this was one of the source problems is more of our stuff was ending up in the trash than in our compost bin. So it's been helpful for me to just keep a bag going in the refrigerator and then when it gets, this was fuller um, before it froze and defrosted. And I went ahead and let it defrost on the porch tonight so that it, we could see what it looked like. So I'm going to get this wet and then I'm going to dump this in there and then every day we're going to just keep giving a good roll and keep it wet and keep adding some leaves to it to get all this broken down. So I'm probably going to add some leaves today too. Alright, so I'm going to get some water from my watering pail here. And we're just going to add that in. And this composter has a drip system in the bottom of it, so it's not like it's just going to stay full. And then I've got my kitchen stuff, which I dare not smell, and I'm just going to dump that in there. And all that gooey, ooey, ugh, it actually does have quite a smell. Um, we're going to dump that in there. See, and that's nice and wet. And I'm going to take this, actually, and brother, will you hand me about two handfuls of those brown leaves over there? We're going to put a little bit of brown in there. One more. You got to get some of those sticks separated from it. Okay, and I'm going to pass back to you. And then I'm going to put just a little bit more water on there. Um, just so those dry leaves don't come in and take everybody's moisture. And then we're going to close it up and see there's another compartment. So when I get this one almost done, I'll start over here. And um, I've got my vent. I'm going to kind of close my vent a little bit just so it's not drying out as fast every day. And it still sounds a little dry to me. And it is. So I'm going to just put a little bit more water on this side. Because I don't want to hear it moving. I want to hear it flopping. And um, so that's it. And this is going to be a process that I'm going to kind of check in once a week. And show you how this pile is going. And see how long it takes us to make some of our own compost. So check you later man. Hi, good afternoon. I just wanted to check in with you real quick. We're doing a lot of different gardening things today and what we're about to do is plant with the young girls. We're going to set up a couple of different container concepts. One of them is going to be a carrots, just all different kinds of carrots in one bucket. And the other thing that I'm really excited to try out with you is a combination of some spinach and some carrots in a bucket because I'm working on this awesome concept um, to present to you in the spring that would be about being able to hopefully grow um, a salad in a five gallon bucket. So this is the first step to see um, how that's gonna go. So we're gonna cut real quick and go over and check in with the girls. Okay, so here we are with the girls and this is gonna be our first bucket. 
that we're going to actually try out our spinach and our carrot uh, scenario. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna kind of adapt a little bit of the square foot gardening into this scenario. And I'm gonna have um, Pearl put in, um, I want you to poke a hole right there, right there, right there, and right there, just up to like that nub of your finger. Nope, just kind of more like that. There, there. One there. Mm -hmm. And one there. There. Okay. And then we're going to put, that's going to be where we put our spinach at. So I'm just going to put some of these in my hand and I just want you to take one or two seeds and put them in each of your holes. I'm going to take two. So I'm just going to take one, three, two. Try to grab two at one time and see if you can get that in there. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go an opposite pattern. We're gonna go here, 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 and here, and we're gonna put in some Danver carrots. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because the Danver carrots are gonna be some of our longer carrots. And these are really, really small. They look almost like little flecks of nothing. So it's you just wanna grab, first poke your holes. We you go do me a pattern again with your fingers the same way. One there. Perfect. Now just take a little now just take a little pinch of that and set it into each one of those holes. Pinch right there. Pinch right here. Mm -hmm. Pinch right here and a pinch right here. Perfect. Here. And then we're just gonna get this little piece of dirt off here. This and we're gonna fun. slide those back in. What'd you say? This is fun. This is fun. We can clean your pretty nails off. Okay. Now, on the sides, I want you to come along here, and I want you to go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can you do that for me? What? Not too deep. Oops. That's way too deep. We only just need to go to your little nub right there, because that's about a half okay. inch. Well, wait. Let's start in a different hole. So start right there. Just a little. Might that's all. You. Nope. A little bit further out. So come up like all the way to here. And then here. there. Yep. And go a little bit the same. Here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now. And we're going to do just one there in the middle. Now this time we're going to do, um, oh, that's the wrong one. This time we're going to do some bambinos. And we're going to do the bambinos because they're a little bit shorter of a carrot. So our thought process is that we're going to put our longer ones in the middle. So they have a lot longer space to go down. And then we're going to put our little ones around the edges. So I'm going to grab the bambino here. And... Open that up a little bit more. Same thing. This time I want you to go along. Let's just kind of, we're going to cover up everybody else so you just kind of mm -hmm. don't think about them for a second. And those might have gotten a little too deep too because we weren't really understanding our depth. But that's okay. So, it's an experiment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. Just get you a little pinch and put in each one of your holes. One of these? Yep, each one of your holes there. Is that, that all of them? Yeah, I need that one. Okay, perfect. 
We'll get these back in the package and now we're going to work on our big carrot bucket which is where we're going to do our rainbow blend and that's going to give us all these different fun colors here and i also really can't wait to do some of this but i got to get another bucket ready for that so kids if you want to come over here and this time we're going to go in a pattern um kind of think about like a spiral okay? okay so you can actually start right there in the middle just the same depth just only as much as like your first little nub okay so go there and then maybe go here and then let's open it up a little bit here here okay i get it you see and then keep coming over here open up a little bit more and then go here keep going I don't really want those down there in that water either. Okay, you all set? Yep. Okay, same thing. I just want you to take a tiny little pinch and, put it on. and just put in each one of the holes. So maybe start with your same pattern so that you know where you're going. A little bit smaller than that. Just a little bitty pinch. Maybe what would fill it. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. And me, what color purples would what or what color carrots would you like to see come up out of this batch? Did you see what colors there were? Um, I think I'd like to see some um, purple. Some purple ones. Why? Because they're my favorite color. Yeah. What colors would you like to come up in this? I think I'd like to see some of the white carrots. You know, I've seen other people um, in videos uh, make some or grow some white carrots in some different colors like that, but I never have. And I don't think I've ever maybe bought them in the store. Maybe in like a restaurant, I might have had some different color carrots but i've never had any that i just bought or cooked myself so i think it'll be really interesting for us to have a variety and then think about having some purple carrots in your lunch to take to school that everybody would be like what are those <laughs> and I'd be like they're purple carrots i grew them don't you know yeah don't you know they're not normal though but there's also sorts of gem corn that i like yeah. I want to try some. It's probably not going to be different, but still. <laughs> probably not till the summer, huh? Yeah. All right, so you want to start patting that back over? Yep. So just kind of cover it up lightly. Kind of like. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do to finish up these buckets that the girls walked up, worked on is I'm just going to put a little bit of this bull manure on top and a little bit of my pre-mixed soil that's all really finely uh, screened because carrots, if they run into a rock or if they run into any little piece of wood, they've got a bad tendency to go the other way and make kind of a crazy carrot. So we're trying to do our best carrot harvest ever. So we're trying to make all the little elements as perfect as possible. So we'll catch up with you here in a minute when we um, water in our seeds and just let things go. So here we go. Okay, something I want to share with you real quick about this dirt is this is actually the dirt that we had in all of our buckets that we used for tomatoes uh, this summer. Now, we're reusing this dirt from those tomato plants, but it's very important to know that you do not want to be reusing tomato dirt 
for tomatoes again. You need to let that dirt be um, something else be grown in it or just use new dirt altogether. This is the way that you keep down any um, parasites. And hey, babe, I don't want that all the way full, so just maybe one or two more. But that's the way that you're going to keep down any type of fungus or bacteria or just different diseases that um, tomato plants are prone to. So do not reuse your tomato dirt for tomatoes. Grow something else in it and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to reuse all this dirt for something other than tomatoes. And so right now, okay, so right now we've got um, our little kitty pool here that we picked up for free, mind you. Uh, we got this, uh, just we have a bulk trash here like once a month and so we picked it up there we've drilled our holes in it and we're going to fill it up most of the way with the soil that we're reusing from the tomato plants but then we're also going to amend it with some compost and some bull manure Now, a wonderful thing to note about this is no matter how much water as we're just watering in this soil gets, see how it's not really puddling? Like it will puddle for just a second and then it just sucks it right in. And that's exactly how you want the consistency of your soil to be. Um, that's a good little setup there for you. So next we're gonna plant our lettuce garden here. So stay tuned. So we kind of want it like this distance away, you know, same, same distance, you know what I mean? So.